Tell us what you think, Jesus. Is it against our law to pay taxes to the Roman Emperor? I'm very grateful to Comrade Genth. He wrote a book called Jesus Asked. And he looked at the way Jesus would respond to people, especially those challenges from the Pharisees, and the way Jesus used his own questions to get his point across. And this passage from Matthew 22 is a classic. The Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus. They're giving him what I call a hospital pass. I used to play rugby in my younger days. And a hospital pass is where you're given the ball and you're sort of not ready, not in position, you're wrong-footed, and you look up and the opposing pack is coming straight at you. You have nowhere to go and bang, they flatten you. And the Pharisees believe they've given Jesus a hospital pass. They ask him this question, is it against our law to pay taxes to the Roman emperor? And Jesus has nowhere to go. If he says that, uh, no, it is right to pay taxes to the Roman emperor, then as far as the Pharisees were concerned, well, he's going against the, the belief that Israel was God's people and that we should only serve and bow down to God. But then if Jesus had said, no, it is wrong to uh, pay taxes to the emperor, then of course he's being a rebel and the Romans would probably come and take him away, maybe imprison him, torture him, maybe even execute him. So I think from the Pharisees' point of view, it's a win-win. Either the people uh, won't like him because he seems to be supporting the Romans, or the Romans won't like him because he seems to be inciting people to act against them. Jesus, of course, is ahead of the game. And he responds by asking the Pharisees two questions. And the first one maybe isn't one that we think about too much. He says, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? And that's a more profound question than it might seem. After all, the Pharisees want Jesus to give an answer that will get him into trouble with the Romans. They would love him to say, do not pay taxes to the Romans. But that's very much the answer that they would give themselves. Because they would see themselves as God's people. And they would not want to be paying taxes to the Romans. So the answer that they give, or they would give, is the answer that they want Jesus to give in order to get him into trouble. You see what I mean? Why are you doing this? Why would they want to harm a man who agreed with them about their duty to God? The second question is much more familiar. Jesus often taught with props. He used to point out things or take hold of things. And in this case, he asks for a coin and he works a miracle with the coin. He asks the Pharisees to produce a coin and they do. And he asks them very simply, whose face uh, or whose image is on the coin and whose name is on the coin? And as usual, the Pharisees speak before they really think about the implications about of what they're going to say. It was obvious whose face and whose name was on the coin. It would have been an engraving of the Emperor Tiberius, and then an inscription would have said something like, Tiberius Caesar, son of the divine Augustus. Now, I wonder if any of those listening would have picked up on this. The Pharisees present would have been well aware of the first and second commandments that you find in Exodus chapter 20. That the Lord their God is one, and they should have no other God but theirs. And the second commandment saying that there should be no uh, idol, no image of this God to bow down to. So no other God but uh, the Lord, and no image, no idol uh, of a God. And here they are in their hand, holding a coin with the image of Caesar, who many in part, that part in, in the world those days saw as divine, and even an inscription saying, talking about the divinity of the emperor. And I wonder how many of those Pharisees are thinking, uh-oh. But Jesus doesn't uh, let them dwell on that too long. The answer is straightforward. He says, if you say the coin has the emperor's name on it, if you say the coin has the emperor's image on it, then pay it back to the emperor. It's obvious. Game, set, and match to Jesus. It's his coin. Pay him what is due to him. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He then 
uh, uses this coin to teach them some profound Jewish theology. He goes on to say, but you pay to God what is due to God. The coin shows the image of the emperor, so the coin belongs to him. So you have to find something that has the image of God and pay that back to God. And maybe this has rung bells with some of those Pharisees who are trying to trap Jesus. They would know the first chapters uh, of their own scripture. Genesis chapter 1 that speak of creation. Of God creating human beings in his image. The image of God. The image of Caesar. In effect, Jesus is telling them their coins belong to Caesar. But they themselves belong to God. So Jesus avoids the trap but puts the ball firmly back into the Pharisees' court. What are you giving to God? But that question is also one to be asked of us, because we too are made in God's image. And we who call ourselves Christian, we bear God's name in our hearts. We belong to God. What are we going to give God today or tomorrow? What are we giving back to him in the way that we live our lives? in the way that we meet and that we treat other people. And for me, this is the challenge uh, for me and for all of us as we read this wonderful story. You bear the image of God. You have his name written on your hearts. Give God what is due to God.